Hello YouTube, today we're making pulled pork in the Instapot. Uh, this recipe and this rub can also be used for, um, you could use to do the same thing and make um, tamales with this recipe. You can also use the same rub to make your baby back ribs with it. It's really easy. The recipe for the rub will be listed below and the directions for how to make a pulled pork. You can also use pork loin if you're using pork loin. Cut it in about two inch chunks. Uh, put the rib rub all over it and you'll only cook a pork loin about probably 45 minutes. Uh, what I did was I washed, rinsed off the meat, dried it off with a paper towel, then I put the rib rub on it. And you'll set it out. I set it out on the cutting board and let it dry to the meat for about 20 to 30 minutes. This Drying it to the meat keeps the rub from falling off basically in the pot while the steam and the water is coming down on it. If you dried it to it, you're going to get a lot more flavor out of your pork loin, which you're using, or your, this is a Boston butt roast, and uh, it weighed about four and a half pounds. So after I let it sit for about 30 minutes, I put a couple of cups of water in the instant pot. You can use apple juice if you choose. Uh, if you're going to use apple juice, some like to use apple cider vinegar. I wouldn't add more than probably a tablespoon to it. If not, it overpowers the flavor. If you like vinegar and you want it to have a vinegar taste, add more. And you can add half apple juice, half apple cider vinegar. I think it's too overpowering, so I don't use it. Um, I like to add the juices back to the pulled pork to moisten them up. But I do that after I have put the juice in the refrigerator and allowed it to cool completely where I can take all the fat off of it. If not, it's got too much fat in it. Most of the time I do use pork loin because it is more lean. Um, I started out cooking it in the Instant Pot for 60 minutes. It wasn't long enough. There's really not a set time that we can give you that's exact when you're using thick cuts of meat like this, like a roast. Uh, so you're better off starting out with a lower time and cooking it longer if you need to. I actually cooked this a total of an hour and about 40 minutes to get it tender enough. How you're going to know it's tender enough is you put a fork in it, twist the fork. If the meat twists really easy, then it's ready. If it's still tough and you have to really force to get that meat to tear apart with a fork, it's not ready. It's not going to be tender when you're eating a pulled pork sandwich. You don't want the meat to be tough when you're eating pulled pork. If you're doing ribs, um, cut your baby back ribs into, say, about where it would just fit in the Instant Pot, or you can do it in smaller sections. Uh, you'll only pressure those for 35 minutes. You'll do the same procedure. Let the rub kind of dry on the meat before you pressure it. Use the same apple juice or water. After you pressure them 35 minutes, you'll place them on a roaster pan, put them in the oven on about 400. After they've cooked about 10 minutes, and kind of dried some of the moisture off of the ribs. You'll baste it with barbecue sauce and you'll turn them about every 10 to 15 minutes whenever you see that the sauce is caramelized to the meat and then you'll turn them over, baste the other side and you'll do this until you've basted both sides twice. Uh, at that time when you get to the end of it, if you pressure them for 35 minutes on high, they're going to be fork tender and the bones will just pull right out. It's really a great way to make ribs. Uh, the same with your pork loin, only about 45 minutes to cook a pork loin, but it is going to take longer for this thicker pork butt roast that has the bone in it. Uh, each uh, pork roast that you cook is gonna not going to be an exact time because it depends on the cut of the meat and also how old the, the meat was, the, the animal that was killed. There's lots of factors in there. That's why you're not going to have an exact time. Uh, I hear a lot of complaints about the Instant Pot on some of the groups that say, it, you know, I cooked my meat, it wasn't done, or it was overdone. Well, you're better off letting it be underdone and being able to cook it a little bit more than you are overcooking it to where it's too tender for what, how you're wanting to use the meat. Uh, I personally like most of my meat fall off the bone tender. Um, that's the way I like to eat it, some don't. That's all a preference. If you have any questions, you know, list them in the comments below and I'll help you out where I can. I'm not going to show you on the recipe how to shred the meat. That's really easy. You know, if you've allowed the meat to cool 
you do want to put it in a skillet and heat it back up or in the microwave and heat it back up before you add the barbecue sauce that way your barbecue sauce will soak into the meat if it's cold it's not going to go into the meat uh, if you want to use some of the juices back on it cool it overnight skim all the fat off of it that way you're not eating all that pork fat and then use your juices from the uh, pork loin or pork butt roast whatever you've cooked you can use those juices back in your uh, shredded pork and it just gives it a really nice flavor I also use more of the powdered rib rub in my pulled pork it gives it a nice flavor it doesn't make it too salty there's not a lot of salt in this recipe you may have to add more salt at the end uh, if you like it salty you know when you make the rib rub recipe up uh, add more salt to it that's up to you on how you want to flavor your food I personally don't like a lot of salt like I said if you have any questions leave them in the comments I'll help you where I can and this is the pressured prepper and I'm out have a good day